This episode of the Totally Rad Show is brought to you by Squarespace. Coming up, Michael Bay and James Cameron give us a special sneak peek at Transformers in 3D. Pleasure to introduce to Titans of Filmmaking, Jim Cameron and Michael Bay. I actually think that all films benefit from, from 3D in, in varying degrees, but when I heard that you were considering 3D, I thought, man, I've got to talk Michael into this somehow. He invited me to the set of uh, Avatar. He's like one of my idols here. And he says, Michael, We've done everything, and I'm like, well, you sunk the Titanic. I didn't, so I got a lot more to do. But uh, he said, it's, it's, you got to look at it as a toy. It's another fun tool to, to help get emotion and, and character and, and create an experience. And, and I'm always trying to create a great summer experience for the moviegoer. The marriage of your technical filmmaking and action and the, the lucidity of the shot design that you create. These long evolving shots that just go and go till your jaw's dropping. And I thought, I've got to see that in 3D. Was there anything that you actually did with the camera with this rig that hadn't been done before or tried to do? Man, a lot of stuff. We're putting these rigs on these cable cams and then, you know, you put a 3D camera on a wingsuit guy following these wingsuit guys through the canyons of Chicago, through the buildings, around the buildings, about 150 miles an hour. It was a huge challenge. We used the Avatar crew. They're one of the best 3D crews around. You know, I'm just a director with a little dream of doing a 3D movie and, uh, um... <laughs> But, but talk about it from an aesthetic standpoint. How did, you, how did you find actually shooting in 3D? To me, I like the intimate shots, like uh, Bumblebee, where he comes into your space, because you emotionally you can feel these huge things, and it just felt right for this movie. I always have foreground, background, background in all my shots, yeah. and um, that's just how I've done it my whole life. And so it really fit very natural how I was shooting, and it was just great to sculpt with, with space. Well, I just saw the whole picture, and uh, it's pretty great. I like the depth, you know, I mean, I like the fact that you're using the 3D aggressively and really embracing it. What's the most exciting element of 3D movie making at this point? Just like Jim said, I had fun on the set shooting it. It was like a new toy, and uh, I actually had a wonderful time doing 3D. I think it's the applause of the audience when they see something that blows their minds. That's the most exciting part, and you know you've, you know you've won them. You know, you know you've taken them someplace. I mean, it's what, what we just experienced here. That's what's great about it. You can't beat a line like that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be fine. I promise you. All right. So Jeff and I just walked outside from Paramount's uh, big theater. Dan is unfortunately in Ohio, which sucks for Dan, because yeah. we just got to watch Michael Bay and James Cameron talk about the experience of shooting in 3D in today's world. Mind-blowing stuff. Not only yeah. that, we got to see about, probably, what do you think, 15, 15 minutes? 15 minutes, yeah. 15 minutes of 3D footage from the new Transformers, Dark of the Moon, which brings yep. me to my first question, which is, it kind of looked kind of awesome. Uh, well, here's the Your thing. Your Mr. Don't Like I, is the Transformers. I but... think this is the perfect way to watch these movies. A 15-minute chunk <laughs> that contains really no story and all flash and amazing yeah. shots. Yeah. Because there were some amazing shots. Yeah. And it, like you said, it sucks that Michael Bay superfan Dan Trachtenberg is not with us. He would have he mind blown. Mind blown. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about Michael Bay and James Cameron being on stage in front of us in a second. But the yeah. footage that we saw... Yeah is really impressive and really great in 3D. Yes. Um, and like, I, I have a feeling I still won't like the movie. There were even some comedy bits in the footage where I was like, that's yeah. the part of Transformers I don't like. <laughs> but I remember when I saw the first Matrix. Remember yes. when you saw the first Matrix? Yeah, oh and there yeah. was that shot in the hallway of Neo with the guns 
doing the one-handed cartwheel, shooting yeah. in slow motion, and you were like, that is the coolest shot I have ever seen yes. in my entire life. Yeah. There's a shot like that. Yeah. When Shia LaBeouf is thrown out of Bumblebee, because Bumblebee turns into a robot, and it's all in slow motion, and he's falling through the air, and Bumblebee transforms back into the car around him yeah. and continues driving. It yeah. is like, yeah. that's the coolest shot yeah. I have ever seen in my life. They did a lot of really amazing things. I mean, obviously, we're going to talk a lot more about it when we finally see the movie. Right. But you got to just, you've got to go, God damn, is Michael Bay a badass. We all saw the Squirrel Man pictures, the Flying Squirrel Man yeah. pictures of the people in like Chile or whatever, going by the like walls and stuff like that. Yeah, those flying but Michael suits, Bay, yeah. a different kind of thing. He <laughs> literally calls and goes, "Get those people on the phone. I'm writing them into Transformers 3." And I'm so glad that he did. You literally get to see like five guys in those flying suits flying around in Chicago. Chicago. He said it took them a year to get the clearance for them to go through sh actual Chicago. That. It, that is one of the things where you go, you're, the filmmaking is up here when you can yeah. just go. And to have Michael Bay and James Cameron talking about things like limitations, right. that's not a word for them. Right. The, the word for them is that shit doesn't exist on the planet. Right. That's what they mean when they say limitations. Yeah. Most it, people go, we could never afford that, or that would just be this, why would you ever rent that? Yeah. You know, for them, it's, oh, I want that. It doesn't exist. And for James Cameron, it's, well, then I'll fucking make it. Well, a quote from tonight, James Cameron said, as far as visual effects go, we're at a point where if you can imagine it, you can do it. Yeah. And all it takes is money and time. And he there has is, both. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there is, there is literally nothing that he could possibly imagine and want to put on screen that money and time couldn't get you on the screen, which is not someplace movies were. Oh, hell no. You know, even five, ten years ago. So. No, hell no. But obviously, so they talked a lot about 3D and how the advent of 3D and how 3D has come along. And I thought one of the things yeah. that came up, which I totally agree with, which is they, they really see bad 3D conversions, these quick, dirty 3D conversions. I mean, you look at films that were notorious for that, like The Last Airbender, which was... Yeah, even Alice in Wonderland and Thor. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, there are some that are just doing it slam, bam, bam, and that that Clash is actually Titans. bringing down the 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 whole industry of 3D because then people don't look at 3D as a value add. Whereas you look at something like Avatar and you go, in 3D, that is a value add. Now, th that is exactly the part of the discussion that they had that I found to be most interesting, and I wish they had spent more time on it because the thing that I've come to believe in my own experience with 3D, it, you know, I think all of us on the show, after we saw Avatar, were like, yes, 3D. Yeah. And then there's been some movies where I'm like, oh, maybe I don't feel this way about 3D. Yeah. But it's not 3D. No, it's, it's them and their application of 3D. Exactly. And, and one of the things Cameron was talking about on stage was how too many studios are looking at it like this thing you do that's like a sound mix. Yeah. That you put, you put it into the post-production schedule and you slam it together and it happens and you're done. He said, it's not that. It has to be its own beast. And uh, interestingly, I thought, um, uh, Michael Bay was saying that there are, there's about 15% of Transformers 3 that is post-converted into yeah. 3D, but there are ways to do it right. Well, and, and also I think with him, one of the things I found really interesting was that, because I'm a big... No, I don't like when digital really feels digital. Yeah. Um, I was surprised to find out that Avatar was shot entirely in, in digital. I mean, I, I knew that a lot of it was digital because it's fucking Avatar. Yeah. But I thought that some of it was was film because it looked amazing, some of the practical stuff. Um, but he would actually said that what he thought of was wide master shots. He did all digital with the 3D stuff. But that it was better for him to do the face stuff, the close-up, the close yeah. close-ups, shot on film, and then post-converted. But he also spent seven months yeah. testing post-conversion houses. houses. Yeah. He went to all the post-conversion houses, which is great because that means that there are people that if, as a tool, conversion can work yeah. as long as it's not looked at as this sort of like slam-bam extra money. Right. But then they also talked about the, the, um, the problem with the fact that all the theaters yes. aren't uniform and that you could exactly. have these dim theaters with bad sound. You know, it's, it's that stuff that Lucas was fighting against with all the THX thing that he right. went There's through. Right, there's no standards. There's no standards. And that's what Cameron was mentioning, that, you know, they get these new projectors with these huge new bulbs that are brighter, which is what they need, and that the uh, owners of the, of yeah. the theaters use that as an excuse to turn down the bulbs because, like, oh, it's... 
it's save better. The balls, but yeah, they can yeah. save money. And so you don't you don't have standards. You don't have a uniform way of saying. Yeah. And so I kept thinking through this whole discussion. I don't even know how I feel about 3D yet. I don't have a way yeah. of making sure my 3D experience is the best experience for this film. And I, to be honest, I think that's one of the reasons why everybody's talking about 3D in the home is, oh, well, 3D is what's bringing people back to the theaters. But I think if they don't solve the standards issue, it's going to bring people to do 3D in the home because they have control over it. They can yeah. brighten the fuck out of the picture. You know what I mean? And as we start to see passive glasses in the, in the home and, and right. the stuff that we saw at E3 like two years ago, or yeah. one, a year ago with that multi-viewing angle, 3D, right. with flat screen with no less. glasses, yeah. uh, you know, you may want to choose that over seeing something in a, in a theater theater, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, and, and I want these guys, they clearly recognize that that's the problem. Yeah. And I've, you know, even Pirates of the Caribbean for me felt like, I don't want to be watching this in 3D, yeah. but watching that footage they showed of Transformers in that theater that yeah. you know those guys are like, <clears throat> if we're going to show this to this audience, we want to make it right. Yeah, right. It was awesome. I mean, yeah. the 3D was awesome. Yeah. And I remember the feeling that way about Avatar, but I haven't really felt that way since. And I think that, unfortunately, we have all these substandard ways of seeing it. And, and it's doing it a disservice because it really is an awesome technology when yeah, used right. I thought it was really interesting, too, that uh, Michael Bay was saying that it actually cost $30 million more just simply to say, let's shoot this on in 3D. Yeah. I mean, that's a big chunk of change, you yeah. know what I mean? And it was also interesting <laughs> hearing how the technology is changing so quickly that yeah. you think this movie that hasn't even come out yet, that it was shot, what, a year, year and a half ago? Yeah, I think ago. it started in 2008 or something like that, right. 2009. Well, so it's, yeah, it's, so it's, it's older than that, but Cameron is talking about over and over again, well, no, there's a new camera that can do that, but it just, it just yeah. came out, or yeah. it's coming out in six months from now. It's like that technology is all changing so rapidly that all these movies, as they move forward, are even going to be more and more refined. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of really interesting stuff. Some of the stuff was so freaking technical. It was like watching two was a post old ladies <laughs> bicker about bridge when you have no fucking idea what bridge is. Yeah, you know I, was, I, I mean? feel like, like I was in the third class. I missed the first two yeah, classes yeah, yeah. of 3D tech. Yeah. And I'm like, oh god, I hope I can get somebody else's notes because yeah. this is because it was so funny because they would just. Go yeah, back, back and forth. forth about, well, you know, that's and Anna's copy and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, whoa. But it was awesome seeing them comfortable like that. Yeah, it was really cool. But so, I came out of it, I came out of it yeah. being much more excited and much more encouraged about 3D going oh, forward than I, I have been in the last six months. Definitely. And I have to say, I'm now more, way more excited for Transformers 3. I wasn't excited, but now even just being able to see that stuff again. I, I, I'm excited to see that stuff again. The size and scale of some of the stuff that we saw just in those 15 minutes. Oh, oh. The, the little war where the, the, the robots were like this big and the, I mean it was oh, like... Oh, what about buildings going down, people sliding? Oh, yeah. It's like, what? That was yeah. the stuff where I think 3D Audacity. really also gets you. Yeah. When the people jumped out of the back of the helicopter and they used a, a 3D or an Osprey, but they used 3D helmets to yeah. shoot that and you go out afterwards, it's almost like an IMAX ride. Yeah. It's almost like an IMAX ride. And you go, yeah, like the sliding down the glass slide of the thing, and you're sliding with it, yeah. but it's in 3D. Somehow that kicks a different sensor in your brain. But it just makes me so concerned now. How am I going to make sure that I get an experience like that theater in my local multiplex? I mean, I mean you've got to find the arc lights. You've got to find yeah. the, I mean, there the are theaters that, that, are, that are big and that make, make it a point. I think Cameron should step up and make a THX like Lucas did, yeah. but specifically for 3D... Um, projection I I because I would amazing. look I would open up the thing and go well where's the you know the AV1 or whatever it is that is just like THX or DTS or any of those things yeah. you know what I mean it needs to happen yeah so it was cool. a great experience sorry you missed it Dan <laughs> All right, everybody, remember to stick around for this day in red history but first our sponsors square space People, we have to keep talking to you about Squarespace. Squarespace offers user, users a flexible solution for anyone looking to create a blog, personal portfolio, any kind of website, no matter what. It's the what yoga of... It is. The flexible solution. It is a flexible solution. It's sort of like Downward Facing Dog, but you don't need to have any coding experience. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike Downward Facing Dog. Uh, any level of coding experience, Squarespace can provide the tools needed to create super high-end, super complex websites, uh, uniquely your own. Don't worry now if you come across any questions or issues, 
Squarespace also has 24-7 support. Nope. <laughs> uh, that was 2562. I don't know what that's supposed to be, but anyway. Uh, so look, you've seen our sites. We know a ton of you guys have already signed up and started building your sites with Squarespace, but we are now looking for your questions or maybe tips that you've come across about using Squarespace. So email your questions or tips to squarespace at revision3.com for a chance to have your question answered on the show or your tip shown off in a future episode of TRS. Now, if you don't already have a Squarespace site, head over to squarespace.com slash TRI, TRI, <laughs> TRS, to get a two-week free trial, learn more. Awesome, awesome, awesome. TRI is, of course, uh, the college that we are, the Totally Red Institute, right? Right, right. No. That we all That's where, it. That's where we got our teleprompting <laughs> skills. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> On tomorrow's show, we review Kung Fu Panda 2. Today is May 24th, and on this day in rad history in 1935, the first MLB game under the lights. Ooh. They turned on the lights. I feel like that so would that be- So that wasn't like is the that first MLB like dance was called Under the Lights. <laughs> <laughs> under the Sea Dance. Yeah. It, was, no. it was weird because <clears throat> night games up to that point had been full of errors. <laughs> And so stabbing. I feel like weird. that would be a great moment to end a movie. Where, <coughs> maybe it's in a movie where like. Psh, 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 you mean the natural? They turns it on. Yeah, like the oh, lights yeah. go on for the first time. Yeah, like the, I feel a dream. You know, yeah, like when yeah, they yeah. put up the lights and they, you know. And then the movie's about the freaking guy who built the lights. Built the lights. Yeah. That has everything to do with baseball. Yeah, it's like Flash Bill Paul. He had like, yeah, he like, he, the inventor uh, of the light pole. He had a copyright on night lights and, you know. <laughs> yeah. I got a dream. And they stole it from me. Really yeah. Yeah. lights. No, I just love the guy who has the copyright on daylights. <laughs> was like, I got this idea to brighten up the day, see? Oh, they don't work. work at night. <laughs> they don't work at night. Thank you at DJ Hepcat for that submission.